Hello and welcome to our first guide on Valheim and this is a build guide catered for more beginners but also has several more advanced techniques to give you every tip I can possibly think of to help you get building and don't worry there'll be plenty more guides and beautiful time lapse builds coming to this channel. So let's get to it. First, when building a permanent base, pick a good location, ideally on top of a hill but with plenty of forestry nearby for wood, if possible not too far from the black forest for copper mining later on. When starting out you want to level the ground using a hoe and keeping it flat will help this build process. You can build this with stones and branches. Build from the highest point of land, this means that you can build down into the ground rather than have to raise the whole build up later. Have a plan when you're starting out, you don't need to stick to it, but having an idea of how you want it to be will certainly help you and also always build a little bit bigger than you think first time round. However, don't go for a massive build. Place foundations, just like you would when you're building a house, place the foundations to plot out the plan which we've just spoken about. Start with the small planks and then build in a grid. Early game you really want to, for your first build, stick to the grid. There are times of course that you won't use the grid for creating extra detail for example and the likes, but in the main, especially when you start out, your building should be connected to make it really easy for you to build from. Start from one plank and build it outwards rather than doing the corners separately, for example. So, fireplaces. You can't place fire on wood. Now, I wonder why that is. <laughs> so, what you have to do instead is create a designated fire pit spot. Dig out an area with no wooden floors and you'll be able to place a fire. I like to do this against the side of a wall to make a focal point, but more importantly helps with the following. If you have a fire inside, you're going to want to use a chimney. This is because smoke actually damages you if there's nowhere for it to escape. So you want a chimney and chimneys need extra support. So you want that on the outside where you've got supporting walls rather than the inside. Sure, you could just leave a roof patch open, but that doesn't look good and more importantly, the rain will put the fire out. So build a well-supported chimney and add a roof to the top with plenty of ventilation. On the topic of supporting a chimney, be aware of the physics. There is a traffic light style system in place to indicate how supported an item is. And we can see how supported a build item is by hovering the hammer over the said item. Blue means that it's a foundation piece, whereas red means it's unstable, and if you add anything else, will probably collapse. In between the blue and the red, we also have green through to yellow and orange. This also means, by the way, that if you take out a supporting beam in your build, it could cause your whole building to collapse. You can upgrade your crafting table by placing other crafting items near one another. This also follows on to the next point. So tip number 11 is to upgrade your tools at the crafting bench so that they can take more time to break and thus be more efficient. The higher the craft table level, the higher the level you can upgrade your tools. So you've built the foundations and its floors. Before you build the wall and the roof set up, the load bearing supports. This is super important and will help you because you can see exactly how supported your structure is going to be. One thing you might not have known is that rain actually damages your buildings, including log piles, so protect them with roofs or stick them underneath your roofs by your builds. I also want to point out that floors do look great as roofs, but they do take damage by rain and don't class as roofs currently. So if you're going for a beautiful build, it's fine. If you're going for one that you're actually going to use, then it's probably best to go with a roof. Don't you just hate it when the beam isn't actually inside the, the floor? Well, an easy solution is to build a wall underneath the, the horizontal beam and then use that as a snapping point to place a larger beam or a smaller beam so that it goes into the ground. Once you've killed the first boss, you can unlock the pick to mine rock and also dig to lower levels, which make it possible to make streams. I recommend using the smaller half planks for detailed builds as this gives you more snapping points to play around with. If you're building a tower or a wall, consider filling it with dirt. 
It'll give your walls and your tower a little more support, and if raided, it actually adds a little more protection. Early game, you can collect core wood that is strong for reinforcing parts of your house. Go to abandoned camps, place down a bench, and then tear it all down. It gives you easy resources, well worth it. Now once you have the basics, play with the variety, change the levels, go off the grid for interesting builds. You'll be surprised what you come up with. Tip number 20 is to think about the internal decorations to make something feel more homely and cozy. You don't need to unlock various things, you can actually play around with the early game build items to make some pretty cool looking stuff. With this you can also play with the clipping to get some really interesting builds. This probably deserves a video of its own at some point, but it's certainly worth thinking about. And my final tip is to subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with more guides and beautiful time lapse builds that can serve as inspiration for your builds. They're I promise you only going to get better, a bit like a fine wine only gets better with age. Anyway guys, that's all we have time for in this video. If you do want to see more guides, let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section below. And obviously if you enjoyed this, please do drop a thumbs up and why not join me here. Anyway guys, special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, The Calamity, Bo Papa, Cerebral Tag, Trevor, and JP Zone TV, as well as our Lunar Eclipse subscribers, Matt Lippard, Chris McCabe, and the Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, James Irwin. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching, and as always, ciao for now.